How do we actually automate things uh, with Mito? So we're going to talk a little bit about schedules. Um, so let me just kind of dive into that. So on the left-hand side, you should see Mito. Um, so this is a brand new Mito instance I spun up um, for this webinar. I created a handful of jobs. Um, and let me actually just walk through a really simple set of jobs. And we'll use those to talk through the scheduling and then the sequencing after that. So uh, on the left-hand side, I'm just looking at jobs here. So I created a handful of things. So the use case here is I'm going to use a curl job to download a file. And then I'm going to load that file into the database with an IO job. And then I'm going to model that data in the database with a SQL job. So just to kind of walk through this really quickly, the first job here, this is a curl job. So type curl. What this does is it's just going to download a file. So I uploaded a CSV file into a public GitHub repo that we have. And uh, we'll click on this here. So this is what this file looks like. So this is just a basic you know, invoice data set. So it's got invoice date, an invoice ID, a state, and an amount. And this is just sitting in a public GitHub repo. Um, and so we can just download this directly from GitHub. So, um, so that's what this job is doing. So again, curl job, I'm just dropping in the URL here. And we're just setting an output file as collections.csv. So this is the result of creating a job via wizard. So there's a file download wizard. You drop in the URL, drop in any curl arguments, and that's what creates that job. So that's the first job that we'll have here. Um, the second job is an IO job. So just loading that CSV file. Actually, let me run that thing. So we'll run that job here. And now here's this file. So the CSV file is now sitting on the meter box. So the second job here is an IO job. So this is going to do, this is input output. So the input is our CSV file that we just downloaded. And the output here, we're just gonna dump this into a CSV schema and the table called collections. This you can create add job, CSV, go through the wizard um, to create a CSV job that loads data into a database. So let me run this job. All right, and then if we look on our database tab over here, we can see we've got a CSV schema. If I click on that schema, we'll see this. We have a collections table. And if I click on that table, here's the data. So this looks like the same data that came from GitHub. We've got an extra column for which row the data came from, which Mito adds on these CSV jobs. But we've got invoice data, invoice ID, state, and amount now in the database. So the last little job we're gonna do here is just a SQL job. Um, so you can create a SQL job by adding a job clicking the SQL job wizard, and then just dropping in your SQL. So that will create a SQL job. You can see the type is SQL here. And if we edit this, um, this is just a really basic um, flow here in SQL to drop and then recreate a table. So we typically do this type of structure um, so that when that source file changes, the data modeling table is adjusting to that automatically. Um, so this is just creating a table. It's just rolling up the data, doing some aggregations to get by state, invoice date, and amount. Um, so if we run this job, that just sent that SQL command to this database. And we can see we now have in the model schema a collection summary table. And now we've got a little table that's rolled up by state, by invoice month, uh, the sum of amount. So super basic, uh, just three jobs there. So let's talk about actually how do we, now that we run these once, um, how do we set these up so that they're automated? So on any individual job, to, to come back to schedules here, we can click on any job um, and every job in Mito has a schedule as an option. So if you click the little button here, you'll see all the various schedules. So we've got some um, defaults here that are, you know, people use a lot. So I'm going to run something once a day at a certain time. So let's say, you know, 9.30 AM, you can run it daily. You can run it hourly on a 0, 15, 30, or 45 minute um, minute of that hour. You can run something continuously. Um, and then finally here is custom. 
And so I want to touch on this just for a second. So custom allows you to basically run any schedule that you want um, with cron. So a best practice here, something that we do all the time is if you just go to Google and you type cron and then whatever the schedule is. So let's say, I don't know, Monday at 10.30 a.m. Typically what you'll see in the results is this crontab.guru site. Um, and so we use this all the time. Um, it's not a great search result, um, but here's a bunch of different schedules. So let's say, you know, every six months. So what you can do is just find any cron schedule that you want with this tool. You can copy this, drop that into the Mito job, and now this is scheduled to run once every six months. So this has got you know, 12 a.m. on the first day of the month, every six months is what that schedule resolves to in, in text. So that's sort of the, the most basic way to automate something in Mito is to just set an individual job up with a schedule. So uh, if we think about our little use case that we've got where we're downloading a file, we're loading that file into a database, and then we're modeling that, what we really want to have is for all three of those things to happen together. And we, we want to schedule all that together. So I could um, naively just add a schedule to each one of these jobs. So I can set a schedule up there. I can go to my IO job, and I can set a schedule. Um, but what you really want to do is the next little thing here on automation is just create a sequence. So if we get down to the bottom left here, you can add not only a job, you can add a sequence. And what a sequence is, is just a collection of jobs that are run together. And a sequence is just a special type of job. So it also has a schedule. So what I'm going to do here is just create a quick little sequence. And we'll call this our collections use case. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the download the file and then we're gonna do our SQL job, or sorry, we'll do our IO job. This is our CSV collections job. And then we'll drop and recreate that data modeling table. I'm just putting these three, three jobs together. We can set a schedule on it. Um, if you wanna know more about schedules and how, how they work, you can look at our documentation around this. Um, in this particular case, I'm just gonna say continue on error. Um, I don't care if one of these fails for now, but typically I want to not have that set in this particular case. Um, so now I have a sequence that runs all three of these jobs together and I want to schedule the sequence. So I'll remove the schedule from this job so we don't have this job running and, this, and the schedule running. Um, but same exact thing we just talked about, except just applying it at the sequence level. So this is the most basic. So let's do this, do this once a day. And let me go remove the schedule off this one. And let me go find that sequence. One other thing I'm going to do is just tag this with, uh, this is just another best practice, so just tagging something with a stage. Um, what this does is it will put this sequence. I now care about the sequence. It's got a bunch of jobs in it. It's scheduled. I want to see that on the stage. And so I just tag it with stage, and, and it'll show up here. So this is just the main homepage of Mito. And we'll see. We'll be able to keep an eye on this sequence much more easily. Um, and I can run this manually and then let it run on a schedule. All right, um, so that's that's the simple part that's done in, all done in the Mito UI. Um, we're talking about automate, automating jobs that we've created. We can schedule them um, and we can put them together inside of a sequence and schedule the sequence. <clears throat>